Vikings, Ralph Sorensen, did interfere with Sean Yates' attempt to hang on to the yellow jersey. Now, the details of that in just a moment. But first, Phil Liggett, yesterday's violation and subsequent uh, protest. What effect will that have on the rest of the race? I think the immediate effect is that people are asking, should Johan Museo be the leader this morning? Because, you know, teammates are meant to help leaders in tours, but not the way that Rolf Sorensen helped him. And it's true to say that Museo may never have known about the incident which happened behind him. But even so, it's marred the wearing of the yellow jersey a little bit for Johan Museo today. Do you think there's some fatigue and some frustration on the riders' part? I mean, the Flatlanders know that their days are numbered. They're down to one. From here on, we go into a time trial and then up into the mountain. That's right. From tomorrow, when the time trial is held, you won't be speaking of Johan Museo anymore. In fact, he lost the yellow jersey in a time trial last year. And he won't get close to the likes of Miguel Indurain, Tony Rominger, or even the British rider Chris Foreman. So the real Tour de France begins tomorrow. The heads of state come out to fight. And Museo was desperate. He had to get the The Tour de France is Albert Bouvet. In one way or another, he has been associated with the Tour de France for 36 years. And away we go from the city of Poitiers, capital of a region that's very famous for truffles. Didn't have any of that for breakfast this morning, but I did have some anguillette, a very spicy sausage with some local cheese to make here. A city that sits near the Atlantic, very old and historically important. Beautiful Gothic cathedrals, beautiful bridges, rich in monuments. The tour came through here in 1990. From all that tranquility to the earliest time bonus sprint in any stage we've seen so far, Gianluca Bartolami, Johan Maceo, and Frankie Andreo flying by in third place. One man who hasn't been the speed merchant team Motorola had hoped he would be is Lance Armstrong. Now, the two things he admitted he had to work hard on, hill climbing and sprinting. 22 years old, defending world champion, great one-day racer. The question is, can he put all those great one-day efforts together? Last year, he won stage eight, but does not have a single stage victory so far this year. His first goal in coming to the 94 Tour de France. We certainly have a challenge today in another agonizingly long and exhausting stage before the time trial tomorrow. 136 miles from Poitiers to Trey Lissac. Three sprints, two relatively easy climbs. Fields down to 177 now. Four of those guys are breaking away at mile 67, led by local favorite Luke LeBlanc. Bill Liggett and Paul Sherwin are on the course with the call. These are the four riders, though, trying to go for gold today. Luke LeBlanc riding his fourth Tour de France. His best finish was fifth in 1991. And that's the rider to the left of our picture. There he is, the king of the mountains in this year's Tour of Spain, and with which he finished sixth overall. And, you know, he knows these roads inside out because he comes to Dordogne and we're racing very much towards where he lives in the Lim Limousin area. Rolf Aldag, fine sprinter. If he comes down to it at the end, surprisingly, he's never won a stage in the Tour de France. In fact, a great finish, though. Approaching now 44 kilometers to the end. That's about 26 miles. Angel Camargo, he won a stage in the Tour of Spain this year. And Bo Hamburger riding his second Tour de France on the right. Probably best known by British viewers uh, for his fine riding in the Kellogg's Tour of Britain a couple of years ago when he was a young professional. There's a time gap at the moment, 6 minutes, 35 seconds. And I have a feeling that if Luc LeBlanc hadn't been in this breakaway, there would have been no reaction from the main field. But this is a man who has been regarded as an overall uh, contender for the Tour de France. I didn't consider him for this year's Tour, but you never know. If you give somebody five or six minutes lead, that can totally change the morale of the rider. And LeBlanc has been looking for a good ride for the last couple of years. He rode exceptionally well this year in the Tour of Spain by taking fifth place overall, but also he took the King of the Mountains classification. So he's obviously in good shape, and that is why there's been a reaction from the main field. Well, he's gone over the top of the Côte de la Chapelle Notre Dame in first place, ahead of the four escapers. And the French are desperate for a result on the stage of the Tour this year. They've had nothing at all so far, and it could be coming from a strange quarter. Luc Leblanc riding for the Pestina team, which comes out of Andorra. This is a counter-attack, or hopefully the chase. For the glimpse there of the young man in the race, Leon Van Bon, riding his first Tour de France at 23 years of age. But we can see now the word perfect, trying to readdress the situation, and they still have the time to launch Yekimov yet towards the finish. We'll take a break. He's on the outside of Dobbs to drink from his water bottle, and Ralph Sorensen, his teammate of GBMG, Sorensen, who is involved with this man, Sean Yates, number 39 of Team Motorola. GBMG and Motorola really have become rivals. 
in part because of yesterday's activity. Bill and Paul are still following that four-man breakaway. And this is going to be a crucial sprint because if they hang on to the lead they've got, which at the moment is five minutes and 17 seconds, then the yellow jersey may, might well depend on the winner of this sprint between Luc Leblanc and Rolf Aldag. Aldag's the rider here from Telecom on the right-hand side, and here's the picture. At the moment, Leblanc is behind him, and that's why he's chasing him. Aldag goes for the sprint. It's a very good finish here. Leblanc, I don't think, will match him. And on the line, it's Aldag takes the valuable six seconds ahead of Luke Leblanc and Bo Hamburger. And that was the order over the line. That was definitely the thing to do there. Aldag didn't actually take too much of an advantage in the first sprint now, and it's going to be an extremely important if these riders can stay away because the 20 seconds bonus on the finish line could decide if these riders finish more than three and a half minutes clear of the main field, who the yellow jersey is going to go to tonight. The difference now between Rolf Aldag on the far side in the pink and uh, Luc Leblanc is actually down to six seconds. So it's going to be very, very close. And Aldag is much more the superior sprinter of the two men. Indeed, that's right, Paul. They've had one win each in the two special sprints and one second place each uh, since they broke clear. So over, their overnight uh, difference remains of six seconds. They were both uh, over three minutes behind uh, Johan Museo this morning. The Luc Leblanc lying 55th, three minutes, 20 seconds down. Rolf Aldag, 57th, at three minutes, 26 seconds down. The other two riders are here for a little bit of glory because they're a little bit further down the overall classification. And indeed, uh, the inspiration here coming from Luc Leblanc because he lives here in the Dordogne. He's a limousin. He turned professional when he was 20 years of age. Very young indeed to turn professional. And he has had one or two very good performances. And then he slipped away into obscurity. Fifth in the Tour de France in 1991 and uh, we remembered him for when he rode that marvellous stage in the Nissan Classic in Ireland a couple of years ago to win a, a stage there. Let's not forget he was also the French national champion a couple of years ago and he had a terrible Tour de France. In fact, he was eliminated. I think it was on the stage to Al Duez, if I remember correctly, but he really fought to try and stay in the event because of the fact that he had the French national champion's jersey on his shoulders and that was a very tough year for him. But he seems to have bounced back a little bit this year. Of these four riders at the moment, I obviously would say that uh, the, the German Rolf Aldag is the favourite to take the yellow jersey if they can stay clear. But he looks to me as if he's suffering quite a lot. And it's been very, very hot today. You know, the temperatures have been over 30 degrees Celsius, and these roads are very tough. Well, we saw one Kelney rider have a very happy day during the two days in Britain when he won the stage into Brighton. And this is his teammate now, Andrew Camargo. That was Francisco Cabello who was winning in England but Aldag is the man who could spoil a model day for the Frenchman at Luc Leblanc they're desperate for a stage win they're desperate to do something in this year's Tour de France and if Aldag hadn't been along for the ride today then Leblanc could well be in yellow tonight but Leblanc has been the powerhouse of this breakaway it went clear soon after leading the feeding station but they don't stop by the way for viewers new to cycle racing they go through and snatch their little bags of food and keep going well during that period uh, these four riders decided to attack at the same time and uh, they went clear they built a maximum lead of eight minutes ten seconds the last time check we had was five minutes and 17 seconds the majority of the chasing being done by the dutch word perfect team but they're not chasing it down quick enough I think it's almost certain to say now they won't catch them before the line, but of course, they, if they get inside that uh, magic three minutes, 20 seconds, and then, of course, they'll have saved the day for Johan Museo. Well, that's going to be an important thing. In fact, it looks to me now at the back of the field there as if the word perfect riders would have a very hard time, and they were, in fact, dropping to the back of the mayor, and it was Bonesto who were taking off, and now you have the team manager there from the Festina squad is coming up to let LeBlanc know exactly what the situation is between these two riders. The only thing he has to do at the finish to try and get the yellow jersey is to finish in front of Rolf Aldag. And that's what he was saying. Just watch the big German riders, what he was saying. Don't worry about the other two. And it's still coming down. Four minutes, 57 seconds at 50 kilometers now from the finish. Now, Paul, can they, can they hang on to three minutes, 20 seconds? 
Well, it's a very tough course towards the end, and it may well be that they could lose in the next 20 kilometers. They could easily lose one minute for each 10 kilometers of the race. So I think it's going to be really up to the performance of the main field behind because these riders are all contributing to the breakaway, to the success of it. Every one of them is taking their turn. But all that could be a negative thing for the, for the four riders here is if Luke LeBlanc and Rolf Aldag start to play a negative watching game because they know that the yellow jersey could go to one or other of them. Well, Paul, if the yellow jersey does change hands today, it would be the seventh time it has done so in the first eight stages. All right, Major League Baseball, the final stretch now to the finish. Any one of the four men who broke away at mile 67 could win this stage. Here's Paul Sherwood in the home stretch. There goes Camargo. That's why he sat at the back. He was not tired at all. He saw the red kite one kilometer to go. Hamburger chasing him. So the two men vying for the yellow jersey are now left to fight out third and fourth. Now the block will be happy with that because, of course, the two big bonuses of 20 seconds and 12 seconds are now up the road. And the six seconds separating LeBlanc here from Aldag, that's what he wanted. But now he needs the time as well over the main field. And in fact, the man who lives in the area, he comes from France, of course, would be the yellow jersey tonight. Well, I think that would have been the case. But I think this kind of tactic now has blown that out of the window because behind the time is coming down quite rapidly. The race has gone away and they're playing around with the yellow jersey at the moment. These two riders really are throwing away, I think, the possibility of taking the yellow jersey off the shoulders of Johan Museo. This is the race at the front. It's going to be between the little Colombian rider and Bo Hamburger, who's got a little bit more experience. Well, Hamburger, you're right, has a little bit more, but that's about it. And I can't believe that either of them are could possibly be a stage winner in the Tour de France today. But that really is now a real possibility, Bo Hamburger. He came as a very talented rider, and he's now going to try and take his first stage victory. He's got the slipstream of Angel Camargo. The other two are coming up to the line too, but not quick enough, I don't think. And now Bo Hamburger is racing for the victory. The TVM team that needed quite a big fillip. They've had a lot of bad luck, and he's shot away to the finish. And so they get their victory now. It was a Jesper Skibby last year on a similar finish. Now they've got it with Bo Hamburger. Followed by Camargo, Aldag predictably gets third, but I think, and it depends on the clock now, but it's the man who finished fourth, if we get over three minutes, who will take the leader's yellow jersey, and that's Luc Leblanc, and we don't think he can do it. So the pace is high now, but they're racing for fifth place, but of course, Johan Museo is racing to keep that gap within around about three minutes and 15 seconds, otherwise, Luc Leblanc will be the leader of the Tour de France tonight, and that is what France were hoping for. Well, as we see the team of Silvio Martinello try to bring their sprinter up to the line now, the gap is not going to be any light big enough. The last couple of kilometers, they've closed in very, very quickly indeed. Very good average speed, too. You can see it on your screens there. 42 kilometers an hour today, over 26 miles an hour, despite the conditions. And this is the Mercatoni Uno riders coming up to the line. They're trying to place the man who hasn't yet won a stage, but has consistently finished in the places, Silvio Martinello, number 205. Well, he's not going to win the stage today, either. He's looking now for to be the best of the rest, which will be for fifth place. A little green jersey of Abdu Jafarov is in there. So here's the bunch now uh, closing in on the line. There's the gap on the left of the picture on the winner, don't forget, not on the other two. And so they're not going to see a change of yellow jersey after all of that today. Andreas Peron is the rider. Girada is coming through as well. So, here are the final results then. Bo Hamburger, the Great Dane, 
really known from his tour of England, where he performed very, very well last year. An extra $10,000 for the man from Team TVM, Bo Hamburger. Now, Ralph Aldog and Luke LeBlanc had hopes of wearing yellow, but look at Aldog. Once the Peloton came across, the realization for him that he had not beaten the group by enough time to wear the jersey. It will stay with Johan Museev. For the local boy, Luke LeBlanc, not a bad day. Finishes five seconds behind Bo Hamburg. Back to wrap up stage eight in a moment. This is finally complete. An endurance test that Bo Hamburger won today in stage eight. Five hours, nine minutes, and 27 seconds. The great day. Johan Museo still in yellow, but maybe not for long. Uh, tomorrow. Sure, I'll, I'll lose the jersey, uh, but... Uh... We, we see tomorrow. Uh, I not go uh, hundred hundred percent. I go uh, not easy, but a good tempo, because uh, the day after it's, uh, it's it's stage for us. So uh, now it's uh, now we we want to win uh, a stage. Here's a look at the top five, particularly Frankie Andreo, 13 seconds behind Maceo at this point. Indurain seventh, Armstrong eighth, all the way down to Romier in tenth.